Welcome to another episode of Game Boy Roulette, where we take a look at randomly chosen games from the Game Boy Library. Turn and burn. That is terrible advice for anyone who's on fire. The Game Boy did a great many things very well, but there's one genre that it always struggled with. Simulators. Trying to replicate something as realistically as possible was already a tall order for retro games, but when you take into account the limitations of the Game Boy, it becomes a Herculean task. The closest we got were some sports-ish simulator games, but most Game Boy games focused on either prioritizing fun over reality, or in some cases, blending the two by having a mix of simulator-style gameplay, but with a few tweaks to make it more, for lack of a better term, video games game-y. But that's not the case with today's game, an attempt to make a full-on simulator known as Turn and Burn, aka the F-14 Dogfight Simulator. Yes, we're attempting to get a full-on flight simulator, complete with dogfighting on the Game Boy. And with my keen Game Boy sense, I'll admit I'm not too hopeful about this one. There were a few flying Game Boy games, but most of them were third person. The other flight simulator we looked at was F-15 Strike Eagle, which was a bit overly complex and difficult to control. But the difference here is F-15 Strike Eagle was made by Microprose, the absolute masters of flight sims, while Turn and Burn was made by Imagineering, a Game Boy developer whose games ranged pretty widely in quality. I don't know, when it comes to wild dogfighting action, I just don't think we can trust the creators of Mousetrap Hotel and Bart vs. the Juggernauts. But on the plus side, the box art rules, the fighter jet at sunset, the cool logo, the crosshairs, just all the checkboxes on how to make a fun cover. Also, I really miss the days when you could have a quote like, very hot on the box art. So, can we get a high quality flight sim on the Game Boy? Let's burn and turn into a uh, turn and burn. Finally, music on the iDent screen. I, I miss that. Ooh, Turn and Burn, the dogfight simulator. That looks pretty nice for the five seconds I was able to see it. Let's do this. I'm ready to fly. Flight log. Uh, bogeys. Are we playing golf? I don't know what any of these mean. Inbound bogey heading. Turn and... What, what do you want from me, game? Aim 9, aim 54, what? There I am. No, that's not me, it's someone else. Thrust to 99%, uh, how? What? Pressing A pauses the game, that's different. Uh, okay, holding B, 99%. Ready for launch, all right, let's go, let's go. Come on, I'm excited. Take off. Okay, there we go. Now A doesn't, uh oh. Oh. Oh, I can just do this. Okay, let's see. I don't know where I'm going or what I'm doing or how to play. Let's turn up our speed. Holding A is how we shoot. Frame rate is decent, but it's also like there's nothing happening on screen, so it's not that big of a deal. Ah, and select to choose weapons. Okay. Are we close? Oh, we just missed it, I think. What? Oh god, what? What am I doing? Uh-oh. Oh god, uh-oh. I'm... <laughs> oh, I, th I think my worries are coming true here. Is there even an indicator of what direction I'm facing? Okay, it should be straight ahead. Whatever it is I'm looking for. I really hope it's like a giant dragon or something. Hello? Where are you? What am I looking for? What? How did I... Oh, this is... Ooh, we, we, we have some problems here. All right, there's the ocean. Or potentially just the ground with some worms crawling across it. We're like right there, right? Has to be somewhere around here. Uh, what? Okay, I'm lost. Both in the game and in real life. Where, what am I supposed to do here? Is that me? Oh, you know what? That 28K is probably... All right, let's try going up, but this is not going well. Come on, show yourself, you coward. Oh, wait, there's some, something's happening. Aha! Fight me. Oh, God, this is so awkward. Ah, I'm holding where I can't. Okay, slow down, maybe? Ooh, this... Oh, my God. <laughs> okay, so for the record, I've been holding right for the past 30 seconds, and nothing's working. Oh, wait, okay, maybe we shouldn't stop the engine, that's... Okay. Oh god, this is so awkward to play. 
I think I'm upside down. It's genuinely difficult to tell. I think I'm hitting it. There's like very little feedback that lets me know that I'm hitting it. The frame rate is also not great on the actual, uh, on the actual planes. All right, now I'm going full speed. Can I catch up with it? Oh my God, what is happening? I did it, I think. Mission complete. Oh man. Okay, I was able to do it. Heading 090, reduce altitude, reduce thrust. Good luck. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to land this thing. Am I right side up? Oh, God, they don't tell you anything about what's happening. What? What did I do? All right, got to get down to sick. What, what do you want from me? What? Out of fuel? That's a thing? Oh, come on. All right, let's see if I can land. I don't know why I'm trying to do this. This game is not good. It's certainly not unplayable. I mean, I've been able to actually do what the game asked me to. At least when it came to the mission. If I can land, this game gets an extra point. The game is doing a terrible job at explaining anything. Oh, there it is. All right, let's slowly reduce thrust. 16, 12. I feel like I'm going to hit the side of it. I really don't like this game. Oh, God. Hang on. I want to check the guide super quickly. So not only can I not find a guide, but all I can find is people talking about how difficult it is to land and play and do anything. And how there's 99 missions in this game that are all the same. Yeah, this one is not good. Like I said, though, I'm not that surprised. Flight simulators on the Game Boy? I mean, we had one, but that one is kind of awkward. This one's even more awkward. It's certainly not unplayable. And honestly, I'll give it this. The frame rate is bad, but not nearly as bad as other games I've played that have significantly less going on. But overall, it's just, I don't know, not something you want to play. All right, let's... I'm going to try one more time to land. Careful. Okay, at least see what you got to do here. You have to speed up and slow down. No, too fast. Way too fast. Slow down, slow down, slow down. Pull up, Maverick. Man, I'm never going to be a fighter pilot at this rate. The only flying that should be done on the Game Boy should be related to rabbit ears. This is the second flight simulator that we've looked at on the Game Boy, and I'm prepared to say that it's a genre that simply won't work on the system, because while the first, Strike Eagle, was tough to play but at least had a little fun to be had, this one had less going on, but also significantly less fun. I'll give the game credit, it ran surprisingly well without that much lag, but then again that may be because the layout was so simple. Half the screen was a static image, the other half was near featureless ocean. The only complex things the game had to display were the rival fighter jet, which only had a few frames, and the aircraft carrier, which was also mostly static. But the gameplay is where the game fell really short, and it all comes back to one of my favorite descriptors for old games, awkward. I felt like I was at war with the plane while I was trying to steer it during the dogfight, and trying to land was also shockingly annoying. You would think that to just line up your plane with the carrier would be easy, but the slightest taps sent me veering wildly off course and crashing. And with there being apparently a hundred levels in the game, with no variants and no actual ending, simply repeating the last mission over and over, there's no point to engaging with the game since there's no reward. I think it's safe to say that flight simulators are one of the few genres that the Game Boy cannot handle, for one reason or another. Turn and Burn is far from the worst game I've played, but it's not good. If you're desperate to play a flight sim on the Game Boy, look to F-15 Strike Eagle instead. Now, could someone please go alert the Navy? I kind of left a few ships in the ocean that I think are theirs. And that's all for another episode of Game Boy Roulette. Make sure to like the video, comment, and subscribe to follow the series as we continue to dig through the Game Boy Vault. I'm Brian J, and I'll see you next time.